Hey everyone, it's the Koopa Man. You may remember earlier this year I made a video about a phenomenon called Culture Warriors and the problems that they cause. Here's a link if you need a refresher. Since then, the problem has gotten worse and more obvious to normal insane people like you and me. So much so that I believe a follow-up is necessary. The attitude itself has been given a new name. Culture War Brain Rot, and the prognosis for it is negative. Terminal even. The terminally online right, who make up the vocal minority that is right-wing extremism, seem to have become quite eager to jump at shadows and tilt at windmills, so much so that it's creating the exact same kind of mentality that was characteristic of the social justice warriors and the terminally online leftists not a decade ago. And how did they become like this? Well, echo chamber mentalities, of course. But we did a video on that very topic not long ago. Just last week, even. But a lot of what's being echoed is sourced from culture warrior e-celebrities that foster this mentality in their audiences. Take for example the recent chimp out by Heel vs Babyface over the game Starfield. For context, Starfield is the latest video game by Bethesda Game Studios that was released not all that long ago and is being received quite well by anyone who is in a very salty Sony pony. In the game's character creation menu, you are given options for body type and preferred pronouns. Sure, this decision is quite eye-rolling and it doesn't at all need to be there, but it's far more tolerable than, say, a similar game that just recently released where you can have sex with animals. Final panel from hell. Oh, I, I saw a little bit about this stuff, uh, the Baldur's Gate. There's apparently um, a part where, like, a dude has fun with a bear. Like, uh, there's like this, uh, there's like a thing where a, a dude just, uh... Uh, I'll read it. Like uh, it says, Baldur's Gate 3 developer Larian has teased some unusual romance options in the upcoming fantasy role-playing game, including one that lets you have fun with a druid in bear form. Okay. Degenerates like you belong on a cross. But this minor thing is enough for Az to perform like a rabid baboon with a glandular problem in front of the camera to express his supposed outrage. Have a watch. I just want to say something to you, Bethes. Just want to say a little, little something. There is nothing I love more. Taking my headphones off, fuck that. Bethesda, there is nothing I love more than to, to, to sit down, comfy chair, turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my god, just think of this world, just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights, all the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. And you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me, I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Because that's all we fucking know! Because we're boring! We're so fucking boring! With a flip out like this, you'd think Todd Howard raped his dog or killed his mother or something. But if you remember, I used the term supposed. That's because it's all performative. Yes, the fact that he continues to stream Baldur's Gate 3 is proof of it. Performative outrage is what culture warriors use to promote themselves, their videos, their online presences, and increase their Patreon wallet sizes. That isn't to say there isn't a legitimate point to be had. I even said that the pronoun thing is eye-rolling. But when you get involved in political discourse, you need to know when to pick your battles. And when to think about your optics. Otherwise, you risk doing more damage to your movement than you do to promote it. But people like Heel vs. Babyface don't care about promoting their movements, only promoting themselves and their bottom line. To be expected from a frequent guest of EFAP, honestly. Now there is, to be fair, some e-celebrity figures who, while I doubt they'd act like rabid chimpanzees about it, are trying to use Heel vs. Babyface's meltdown and reword it in a way that seems more tepid and digestible to the normal audiences. Such as this tweet from Sargon of Akkad that I shall now read out. It's not really about the pronouns. Pronouns are just a symptom of a pervasive, corrupt, force of social justice continuing to humiliate white men for the crime of being white men. It's everywhere in the real world and now it's in his escapism, which he paid good money for. Why shouldn't he be angry? Entire philosophy is built on a series of lies and requires us all to commit to its lies or face punishment. 
Jesus Christ, this guy's turning into a leftist meme. We are supposed to clap for men winning in women's sports, approve of diversity hires who put people's lives at risk, and believe media when they tell us white men are the most dangerous groups in our countries. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's more. The agenda is not incidentally aimed at white men. It is openly prejudicial and explicitly targets and demonizes them every single day from the most powerful pulpits in society. An evil will has infused itself across our civilization and it demands we recognize it as good. Oh my god, there's my- Every day, in every way, we are lied to by people who know that they are lying, and yet they feign outrage and turn us into pariahs if we speak up and say that they're lying. Well, wow, real case of the pot calling the kettle black there. Ugh. It's unbearable that they expect us to pay for this privilege. That's why he old first baby face is angry, and I don't blame him. Jesus Christ, Carl. Before I go back to my script, brevity is the soul of wit. <clears throat> there is a point to be extracted here, but I can't help but hear the voice of Harry Robinson whispering into Carl's ear about how the CIA can totally be trusted that Martin Luther King was a communist every time he says white men. Jokes aside though, this take two has also been called out for resembling a leftist tweet in its roundabout defense of healed birth babyface, a known grifter. People already question Carl's legitimacy as a culture figure, and it does nothing to help his case to chime in on subjects where he backs people who have the most cynical, selfish intentions. Still, it could be said that perhaps he's unaware of Heelverse Babyface's true nature and was trying to make his own point out of it. His own very long-winded point that didn't need to go on past the first paragraph. Or perhaps he believes this sort of performative outrage is not a big deal, which, of course, is incredibly naive. Though the more pessimistic side of me is thinking that he and other culture warrior-aligned influencers are just circling the wagons, regardless of the merits of the chimp out. Oh. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! Circling back to my main point, the performative outrage culture of culture warrior grifters is what creates the brain rot in the first place. Culture warrior spheres grow around influencers like Heel vs. Babyface, Mauler, and others. And while hyperbole does sell, overdoing it creates a certain idea that things are worse than they are, and thus creating a lack of hope and an addictive dependency on said culture warrior grifter, with them usually being seen as one of or th one of the few who are standing against this great tide of awfulness that's really just a puddle in the driveway in the grand scheme of things. It also makes it almost impossible for people with legitimate grievances about far bigger issues to be taken seriously. Of course, sometimes if you call this very thing out, you get called a witch for pulling back the curtain. We have found a witch! May we burn, huh? burn, 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 burn! Gotta love bounding into clickbait. Regardless, the social justice influencers were just as guilty of this back when they were still relevant, overplaying things like the wage gap while ignoring little details that disproves their entire narratives for the sake of their narratives. Why did they do this? Because they would be unable to sell their books, video series, GoFundMes, and lectures if people knew that things weren't as bad as they were making them out to be. This too is why culture warrior influencers like Heelvers Babyface, Fringy, Muller, Rags, Nerdrotic, Raging Golden Eagle, Ethan Van Doxer, and so many others get on camera and rage out against things that, in the grand scheme of things, hardly matter at all. For Roll of Three, and because I know some people won't get it through their skulls if I don't repeat myself, I'll say it again. The pronoun thing is eye-rolling cringe, but it isn't the end of the world, or enough to turn me off from getting the game. Just like the actual zoophilia isn't enough to turn some people off of Baldur's Gate 3 when I would argue, and have, that is leaps and bound far bigger of a deal. These influencers are, however, for the most part, doing it cynically for the money. It's not really an honest buck if it's done unethically using clickbait and performative outrage to sell the narrative, but hey, what do I know? I'm still sitting here in the nosebleeds with less than 200 subs. And thankfully, it's not a universal case where you see guys like Jeremy Hambly the Quartering or Baring who use outrage thumbnails but are able to keep calm and collected in their videos. This is why Jeremy gets such a hate them around them because he doesn't seem to go far enough to some people who are fans of the outrage. The problem is the consumers of this performative, outrage, ultra-hyperbolic content who then believe that it's the truth and go around acting accordingly. 
Like when Anita started promoting the idea that video games were sexist and racist based on half-truths and exaggerations, which led to her fans and followers creating a toxic leftist culture against video games, gamers, and the hobby in general. So too is the culture warrior influencer sphere creating that same sort of toxic extremist mentality in their own audiences. It also creates a toxic dependency on said influencers, as I stated earlier, with them being seen as the only real source they can trust. It's really unhealthy, almost abusive, to do that to someone. Just to gaslight them into believing the world is this big, scary, dangerous, racist, and or woke place where people like them will be walked all over, and that you're the only person that they can trust in this whole big evil world. And to make matters worse, they don't even believe most of what they're saying. Look at how some of them praise The Last of Us HBO, One Piece Netflix, or Star Wars Andor. It's all very selective, which makes it even worse because it means that they would have the capability of understanding their influence, but are choosing to ignore it, all in pursuit of the almighty dollar. If anyone teaches otherwise, and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. Look, I get it. People aren't responsible for what their audiences do. Believe me, I know. But that doesn't excuse the fact that there is still a responsibility to them that what you're telling them is the truth and not some exaggerated hyperbolic fantasy from your own imagination. There's a cultural influencer I used to watch who, while he's falling into a bit of this mentality himself, has put it best. The game of politics, or in this case the culture war, is two people sitting on opposite ends of a table with unloaded guns. On each end of the table is ammunition for your opponent's gun. When you're engaging in cultural discourse, the last thing you want to do is to slide your opponent ammo for their weapon across the table to them. By acting like termally online stooges who get offended at even the smallest of things, like Heel vs. Babyface did, all it does is provide those in favor of the cult of pronouns to point at that and use him as an example of all their opposition. In essence, don't act like a jackass online to prove to your enemies that you're as bad as they claim you are. In time, as more people begin to see the brain rot and the culture warrior grifter root of it, we can distance ourselves from it as a source and make better arguments for our ideas and our views. Only then can we win over normal people rather than preach to the choir of termly online weirdos. And that's how political change comes about. Not by catering to Big Dick Daddy 666 in Super Chat so he donates more to your Patreon, but to create ideas and arguments that Joe the Plumber and Bob the Builder can agree with. Anyway, it'll be a while till we start to see a return to normality, and even if the pendulum swings back as hard as it swings forwards, we really haven't seen nothing yet. Just remember to keep calm and try not to sweat the small stuff like some sort of weird spurg. it has been the Koopa Man. Game on. Uh, physiognomy of start screens. The start screen of a game can reveal a lot about how rushed the team was and how much pride they took in their work. Starfield start screen either shows hasty shipping deadlines by a passionate team over work or a team that didn't care. So this is the starting screen for Starfield. I'm gonna be honest guys, I think this isn't a problem. I don't. I think the starting screen is totally fine because I don't need it to be like, you know, the cataclysm starting screen where like a dragon flies in and I, I don't know. I think that people are um, priming themselves to be negative about Starfield. You know, we'll see what's going to happen. If I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Oh, and before anyone says, the Lemons rant in my gaming standards video was a joke. Good night.